good to see everyone this morning. It's cool spring day again. And hopefully we get back to our warm spring days again too. <laughs> Just uh, open up where I read a few verses here. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. He delivers me from my enemies. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. That comes from some verses from Psalm 19, 19 and 18. Let's just open with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for the blessing to be able to gather this morning. Um, and we, we're just grateful for the fellowship that we can have with one another. And Lord, as we uh, worship you this morning, just uh, let our hearts be open and uh, responsive to you, Lord. And that we can honor you in all that we do. Uh, just be with those who aren't here today, uh, that you'd be an encouragement to them as well, uh, that they would find uh, strength for you today. We just thank you so much in Jesus' name. songs that kind of open up our perspective a little bit on you know, just explaining how God loves us. And it's just a good example of how, you know, so many people, so many different believers and uh, Christians can have just different ways of communicating uh, how they perceive God's love. So it's always good to get just a different perspective once in a while. And then there's the traditional songs that we've heard lots of. So.
our breath and just pray <coughs> that no matter what the circumstances are, Lord, we thank you that we can bring our praises before you and that we can honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I come to the garden. Sometimes we forget things, and the older I get, the more forgetful I'm becoming. We need to be reminded of things, or we need to write things down. That's why we have honey-do list. <laughs> but Katrina doesn't believe in honey-do list. She will not make one for me. So I have to ask her, is there anything else I'm supposed to do? Like I told you, she puts the pills on the table, and I ask her what they are, and she said, just take them. <laughs> so, I can tell you we've had a number of cold days, Stan, this winter. January and February, 12 days when I went to work were below minus 30. Those are just days I went to work. I keep track of it. Why do I keep track of it? So I can remember. I wrote them down. I can tell you what happened at work on a particular day because I write down what I do. Otherwise, I would forget what I did. And some days, if I don't write it down for a few days, we're racking my brain to remember what I did do. Not because I didn't do anything, Daryl. It's because I just can't remember exactly what happened. <laughs> write it down that day or the next morning. 
And God has written down some things that we've all been given a copy for our very own. And if you don't have your very own Bible, let Katrina know. She likes to remedy that situation. Our very own copy of things he wants us to know, to study, and to remember. Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 to 9. reads, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. In our hearts. Teach our children. Talk about them. Write them down. Why would he want us to become so familiar with his word? He wants us to know these laws and commandments to hold tightly to them because he knows the day is coming when we will need them. Either with struggles we go through, such as we're facing now, or the day when Christianity is outlawed. Acts 20, 27 to 32. Acts 20, 27 to 32, For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to the shepherd, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone, night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So Paul's talking to the elders, the Ephesian elders. He's telling them to beware of false teachers. Beware of savage wolves that will come in among you that don't care about the flock. That want to lead them astray. So he says, watch and remember. He said, he did not shun to declare the whole counsel of God. We need to tell people. We need to continue to tell people what we believe, why we believe it. Some people say, oh, that can't happen in Canada. Christianity will never be outlawed. <laughs> That's what they taught in several countries. You know, in other countries, they used to have freedom, too. Venezuela used to be a free country. It's not anymore. And guess what? Their money's worthless. They throw it in the streets. They used to have a thriving economy. So did Canada. Mm -hmm. If you have, why can't it happen in Canada? If you have a corrupt government, that makes more people reliant on them for their basic needs and then divides and conquers it, it can happen. It is happening. Mm -hmm. They're talking about universal income where everybody gets the same check. <clears throat> you don't even have to work. How much longer will the people working continue working? That would be my question just so they can divide it up amongst everybody. 
Jude 16 to 21. That would be Jude chapter 1, since there is only one chapter of Jude. Jude, verse 16 to 21, just before Revelation. These are murmurers, complainers, walking accord, according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Murmurs, complainers, we got lots of those. How about uh, sensual persons who cause divisions? How about persons who have not the spirit? How about leaders not having the spirit? We got leaders leading this country who don't have the spirit. We are to keep ourselves in the love of God. We are not supposed to argue amongst ourselves about whether we agree or disagree about what our government is doing. Mostly I disagree, just so you know. <laughs> just throwing that out there. I'm about as conservative as they come. I'm more conservative than the conservatives. <laughs> Which means I'm not a big fan of the new conservative leader, just so you know. But that's not what we're supposed to agree or disagree about. We are supposed to love one another. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether we agree. Regardless of whether we wear our mask properly. That's not what it's about. We to love one another. We don't go to, the, to somebody and say, Oh, that person was in my church and they didn't wear their mask properly. You're to love that person, not go wrap them out to somebody who does not believe in God. We are believers. We believe in the Word of God. The majority of our government leaders do not. They do not. We follow God, not man. And if they differ... If we differ from their government, we are still following God. If our government puts us in a position and says, you can't do this, you can't follow God, we still follow God. We come together weekly to build one another up and to encourage each other, and we gain strength in our walk with the Lord when we gather. Anybody believe that? When we gather together, we gain strength and we encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So much more. Stir up love and good works. We can see the day approaching. So keep on encouraging each other. Keep on building one another up. And keep on gaining the strength you need for your walk. Jesus said, remember the word that I said to you in John 15, 20. John 15, 20, 21. 
Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If, you, if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. And verse, chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father or me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes you may remember that I told you of them. You see, they do not know God. They think they're doing God a service when they kick you out of the synagogues. When they kill you. In some countries, that's, what hap that's what's happening right now. Christians are being killed and people think they're doing God a service. He says, remember these things when persecution comes. They don't hate you because of you. As much as they hate you because of him. They hate you because of him. It's not because of what you do. It's because you love him. So what are we to do? Well, from what I've been able to gather, we follow God's instructions. Love God by obeying his commandments. Love others by serving and telling them about God. Psalm 105. Verses 1 to 5. You ever hear those people who say, I just don't know what God's will is for my life? I'll just read them this. Psalm 105, verses 1 to 5. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous, marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make, his deeds. Make known his deeds among the people. Talk of his wondrous works. Tell others how God has blessed you and helped you. It doesn't have to be in a sermon. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. You may need it. You're probably going to need it. We must always remember We are children of God. We're on the same team. We belong to the family of God. And in the end, we are on the team that wins. Lamentations 3, 22 to 26. If you're looking for Lamentations, you find it's Jeremiah. It's stuck right there between... Jeremiah and Ezekiel, trying to keep the big boys apart. <laughs> Lamentations 3, 22 to 26. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. 
It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. We are not consumed because his compassions fail not. So to recap, number one, remember, he wants us to know his words so well that it's in our minds and on our hearts. He wants us to know his words so well it's in our minds and on our hearts. Number two, he wants us to be ready for the days of persecution we may have to face. He wants us to be ready for the days of persecution we may have to face. And number three, he wants us to love one another and tell others about him. That can be difficult. Some people aren't easy to love. Ask Katrina. <laughs> She's been doing a good job. But sometimes it's not easy. Telling others who don't believe, who you know are going to laugh, it doesn't mean you have to keep going to them and saying the same thing over again if they're going to laugh at you all the time. But as long as you've told them once, If we aren't loving the way God has asked us to, we aren't living the way God intended us to. Okay? If we aren't loving the way God has asked us to, we aren't living the way God intended us to. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can look into your word we thank you for your goodness to us, for your loving us, for, your, for, for saving each one of us when we didn't deserve it. Help us to be bold, to continue to tell others about you in these times. Help us to continue to strengthen one another in our walk, to build one another up, encouraging one another. For the days that lie ahead. Lord, we need your strength. And we just thank you for taking care of us and guiding us. We pray that you'd be with each person this week. And pray that they would be blessed by their time here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We think about the the truths that God does ask us to remember. This is, song is one of those examples. Um, as we think about the blood of the Lamb um, really being the, the purpose of who we are. And just the, the original story of salvation. Just to keep in mind. It's great to have hymns that kind of go along with scripture and just help us to remember these important parts.
to remember uh, the words that you have given to us, help us to remember your love for us, and that we would share that with each one around us each day. In Jesus' name, amen. 